Hello everybody, my name is Python and welcome back to another episode here of the Let's Play series. I do hope you guys are having a lovely day. Thank you so much as always for all of your beautiful support. I really do appreciate it. Now, today's episode as the title and thumbnail may suggest, we are going to be leveling our world up guys. We're finally going to make an iron farm and it is going to be entirely concealed underground. In fact, we've already got the output chest. It's right here. So yeah, we've got a lot of things to get done here, my friends. And the reason we're doing it underground as opposed to overground is because I don't really want to have like a, a floating iron farm in this area. It just doesn't seem like it would work that well to me. So yeah, that's why we're doing this. And guys, like I say, I'm very, very excited. So the first thing we need to work out is just how far we need to dig down. Because one of the things I've come to realize is the fact that iron golems will spawn up to 16 blocks away from your farm. So what that means, essentially, is we are going to need to dig 16 blocks down from wherever our lowest point is around here. So I would imagine that would be this. We don't want any iron golems to be spawning inside of this pond. So we need to do 68 minus 16, which is 52. So the base level underground we need to dig down to for our iron farm is Y52. Okay, that's a very important number. We need to bear it in mind. And we're going to begin by digging out the output slash water elevator here. Okay, so we're basically just going to go down to the altitude we need to be at. And basically, guys, we're going to have to be lucky here because if there are any caves around here, then of course that is going to produce some difficulties for us, isn't it? Because then we might have iron golems going ahead and spawning inside of caves, and obviously that is less than ideal. In fact, that's quite bad. <laughs> so yeah, if we could avoid that happening, that would be absolutely fantastic. So yeah, this is the output, and I guess we'd kind of, kind of do this the opposite way round, in that we start off with the output, and then we make the actual farm itself. So, I think maybe one of the first things we need to do is actually head down and go ahead and convert all of this flowing water into proper still stationary water water source blocks this is the easiest way of doing that so that's exactly why we're doing it so there we are by going ahead and putting down all this kelp we've just converted all of this flowing water into water source blocks which is absolutely perfect because of course we need water source blocks if we're making ourselves a water elevator for the output items so for any of you guys interested this is in fact the finished product it is 16 blocks down from our creative test world overworld layer type thing and as you can see yeah there's dude spawning in here and Kind of less than ideal that he's spawning in a wall, though. Oh, wait, no, he seems to have recovered himself. Well, anyway, yeah, this is the concept. It is, of course, by Wattles. I will go ahead and put a link to his tutorial in the description down below. But it's extremely simple. We've got our three villagers. We've got a zombie in the middle, which makes them panic. The panic will then go ahead and spawn the iron golem in the water here, and then down into the lava they go. So this is what I would consider to be the base level. So we need to count how many blocks down we are going to be going from the base level, which in our proper world is Y52. So so it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we need to go seven layers down. And this is exactly what we're going to be doing. This is the output. The iron golems will, of course, get killed by the lava. And the items will simply filter out into the eventual water elevators. So seven blocks further down, of course, is going to take us to Y45. There we are. Once again, make all of it into water source blocks. We don't need to do the whole shaboodle here because, of course, a lot of it already is source blocks. But there we have it. So, if I was to go ahead and put down soul sand at the bottom for the item elevator, then that would literally do it. So, let's make an actual start with this thing, shall we? Let's go ahead and dig out where the kill chamber is going to be, which is, of course, going to be back here. I'll try and light this up as we go along so you guys can actually see what's going on here. Uh, one of the things that will happen is we are going to wind up having a stone block there. We are going to wind up putting down a sign right about here. Then we place down an ice block down here so that any items that wind up going across it will just sort of, yeah, there you go. It'll just go like that. And then, of course, we need ourselves the soul sand, which is, of course, going to become the item elevator itself. And hopefully that worked. Should have done. Right. Yep, there we are. Except for some reason, I can't see the bubbles out of here. Oh, wait, no, I did see one right there. 
Huh. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and make the kill chamber, shall we? It's going to be a two by three, and that is what we're digging out right now. We are going to place down our water bucket, of course. That is going to make all the items flow across the ice there and in to where we need it to go. So let's go ahead and place down a whole bunch more signs. And then, of course, we need to place down the lava for the actual killing mechanism itself. Alrighty, so the signs, of course, will go ahead and hold up the eventual lava here, which, by the way, is going to go right on in there. And then, of course, we need to go ahead and dig out the actual uh, area for the villagers and the zombie to go, right? So, maybe we leave the lava bucket just for now because I don't want to mess things up, right? And, yeah, we'll try and make ourselves the platform, I guess. So, what we're going to do is go three blocks up from the lava. So, this would be the lava layer, and then we need to go three blocks up because otherwise, the fence gates that hold up the water at the top will wind up catching fire. And, of course, we do not want that. There we are. Lava has been added. All right, coolio. Let's go ahead and make a bit of a start on digging out the main area here. So we're going six blocks back, and then what we're going to do is go four blocks over in this direction to our right, okay? But this platform is going to be a block higher than this platform right here. So let's go ahead and start adding in these here fence gates, and we'll, of course, open them so that the iron golems can go ahead and fall down into the lava, and and get killified. All right, so we've got one of the water buckets. We've got the two water buckets. There we go. We've got that going on. We need to, of course, heighten this entire room as well. Alrighty, so before going ahead and adding in the rest of the water flow, I figured it would be a good idea to actually begin on the villager areas. So what we need to do is try to visualize this, okay? We're going to have ourselves a bed and then a block that separates the zombie from the villager, okay? So what we're going to do is dig ourselves down just a little bit, rather like that. Uh, so obviously that'll be the block separating. Uh, we'll go ahead and pick up this water here just for now, just for the sake of, uh, you know, ease of digging things out. This, of course, is going to be where the zombie goes. This is going to be where villager number two goes. And then we'll have villager number three just over here. So let's go ahead and add in all... All of these here beds. There we are. That's one of them out of three. We'll have ourselves the second one just down in there. And the third one is going to go just down here. Now, it might look like we are putting these beds, you know, quite far down. But it's for good reason. We need to be able to have the villagers be able to stand on top of their beds, right? So here we go. We could put in some glass here just so we can actually see what's going on down below. We'll go ahead and do the same right on here and right on here as well. And then, of course, the zombie is going to go right here. And we're going to have ourselves a block at the bottom here. We'll have ourselves a slab down here, which is waterlogged. This is going to be what the zombie stands on top of. Uh, then what we're going to do is add in a slab at the top here all across the place and yeah believe it or not this is enough for the zombie not to be able to get to the villages so yeah perfect right so needless to say i think the next step should be to go ahead a cure the zombie villagers that we've captured over time and b get ourselves a zombie in the middle here the good news is i've already got a name tag for the zombie all we have to do is try and get him down here that may be easier said than done, I must admit. <laughs> all right, well, maybe all we need to do just for now is make a temporary uh, staircase or something. Oh, boy, this really is a race against time. Come on, Mr. Zomble. I'm going to need you to move a little bit faster. The sun is literally there. <laughs> oh, God. The staircase is right over there. Ah! Oh, the staircase is right over there beside the sheep pen. Ah, come on, buddy. Oh, God, please be quick. Come on, buddy. Down you come. There we are. We'll get you down into your new little area where you're going to live forevermore. I haven't got my thorns armor on either. So hopefully this should be fairly painless. At least I hope so. Uh, okay. Nope, nope. This, this, no, nope, no, nope. this isn't so painless, actually. Hey, bud. How's it hanging? How's it hanging? Come on. Down you come. Down you come. That's it. That's it. Yeah! <laughs> Perfecto mundo! Yeah, you can't escape now, Zombert. 
You are trapped, Sonny Jimbo. I mean, honestly, I think the easiest way of doing this would be to lure the zombie villagers down and then cure them while they're down there, right? That would be the easiest way to do this. So, of course, we're just going to have to wait until the next nighttime rolls around, huh? All right, F3 and B. And here we go. It begins, ladies and gentlemen. Number one out of three. Let's disable the hitboxes here. And let's get you lured down into where you need to be. Which, of course, is down this staircase here. Come on, broski. Let's do this thing. Um, not you, though. <laughs> Come on, then, buddy. Why don't you go ahead and... Oh, oh no. Oh, no, no. Well, after getting scared half to death by uh, going through my own lava trap, this guy has apparently found his way in here. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad he didn't fall into the lava. I would have been so sad. All right, boom, boom. Get freaking cured, you sack of poo-poo. Hopefully I don't mind him falling into the lava again, man. That's scary, dude. Oh. All right, come on. Let's do this thing. All right, Mr. Cow, I'm sorry, buddy but you're being separated. All right, let's do it. Easy money, dude. <laughs> Perfect timing. All right. Uh, hang on. Yeah! Get cured, sucker. All right, let's go get this final guy. Come on, please still be nighttime. Please still be nighttime. Please still be nighttime. I will be the happiest guy in the world if it's still nighttime. All right, where's the... Oh, we got loads of time, bro. Hey, Mr. Cow. Are you happy to be finally separated from that other zomble? Huh? Huh? All right, let's get this guy. Yeah, coolio. All right, let me take the boat because it's mine. And yeah, we'll get on with this thing, huh? Come on, but oh, for goodness sake. There we are. Capture the baby one. What the? Oh, there we are. Yeah, that mostly worked. All right, let's do this thing. Come on, baby. Yeah, let's get you down. Oh, yeah. Cool. I had to kind of kite that third one for a little bit. You can see I don't exactly have full health right now. But the fact of the matter is, guys, I think we're just about there. Oh, snappers. All right, let's do this thing. Let's get you purified. All right, and then we'll put the glass back in, and we'll put this back in. And ladies and gentlemen, that's it. The iron farm, officially speaking, is actually now done, believe it or not. All we need to do now is go ahead and get the water flow and all of these fence gates in. Of course, we need to go ahead and uh, fence that off as well. or we'll block it up more to the point. And yeah, this should be it. It should be it. We shouldn't have to do anything else here. There we are. All right. So we need one more little water source, which is going to go right there. And that's it. That is literally it. That's all we should have to do. So once all of those guys are cured up, this thing should just sort of start working. Well, that's assuming there's no caves nearby, of course. Uh -huh. All right. Well, let's go grab ourselves some stone blocks and whatnot. And uh, I mean, to be honest... Do we want to, like, be able to always access this thing just in case? I feel like that would be a good shout, huh? Ah, I just realized, though, if I try to have some sort of maintenance entrance, then the iron golems, I guess, have a chance of spawning inside of the maintenance shaft uh, thing. So, yeah, probably a good idea for us to just go ahead and cover this up, right? So, yeah, as far as I know, we don't have to do anything else. We just need to wait for the third guy to get cured, and then I think that's it. I think that's it. Alrighty, guys, because I truly don't know what's happening down below in terms of the iron farm, I figured maybe we could bring on our camera account just so we could see what exactly is happening down below. And more to the point, if this thing is actually freaking working or not. As far as I know, I haven't missed anything out. I'm pretty darn sure it should be working. Alrighty, guys, well, there's little old me up at the multi bar. Let's have a look and see what's happening down below. All right, so all three villagers are cured. That's fantastic. Ah, okay. I think I can see something that's wrong already. I don't believe those slabs are supposed to be up top. I think that they're supposed to be down below. What I think's happening here is that the villager and the zombie isn't able to see each other. So maybe that is why there's no iron golem spawning up here at the spawning platform, huh? Also, I think I noticed something else. Ah, oh, no! The freaking ice melted, dude! Ah! Well, that's less than ideal, isn't it? It's a good thing I made a little ice tray up here before this episode began, huh? Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah! Easy access to ice. We've got the slabs ready. I'm going to go ahead and grab myself some stone blocks just in case, and we'll get ourselves down there and fix this sucker up. No! 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 
What the hell, dude? Oh, God. All I wanted to do was get down there, man. Why do you have to make things so difficult for me, man? <sighs> Never mind. All right, let's get that sorted out. Right, now we need to try and get the villager back down there. And that is definitely going to be easier said than done. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, right. That's that sorted out. We can get the water flow back in. <laughs> we can get this thing up and running, dude. Alrighty, well, I guess we're going to have to go through the lava blade. Ah! Just to be able to do that. And then we place in the ice. And then place these things back in. And I'm really rather hoping that that is going to do the job. Right, is there any way... Ooh. Is there any way at all? Uh, I mean, maybe the easiest way is just for me to go through, right? Like this. There we are. Okay. Go through. And then... Ah! Oh, darn it. Ah, oh, I didn't manage to freaking do the thing. <laughs> all right. How are we going to do this, huh? How are we going to do this? You know what? I'm just going to go ahead and pull up. I, ju I cannot be bothered. All right. I can't be bothered to deal with with that annoyingness. I swear to God, if I wind up accidentally pillowing up into a farm and breaking the redstone or something, I'm just gonna be done, bro. <laughs> I just want this thing to be done, man. Alrighty, guys. Last ditch attempt in terms of the villager versus zombies looking at each other. I put a trapdoor at the bottom and a trapdoor up top. I'm hoping that that will do the job in terms of allowing iron golems to spawn in. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, taking a look at what is going on down below. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, these lot definitely are able to see each other. I mean, you can see they're running around like absolute headless chickens. They don't know what to do. I don't know, maybe I just need to re-log and then maybe the iron golem spawning will kick into gear? Potentially? I hope so anyway, because I'm pretty darn sure I've got everything right here. Oh, dude, it worked! It worked! Relogging the world kicks the iron golem spawning into gear. Brilliant. Okay, so that means some uh, iron ingots and whatnot should have wound up uh, going up that elevator. All right, let's just hang around for just a few seconds. I want to see them spawn in. I wonder how often it actually... Oh, hey! Right. They spawn in walls, though. That really isn't that ideal. I have an idea, though. What if I was to sort of amend the water flow so it sort of goes into the center? Oh, hang on. This guy just spawned right here, but again, kind of stuck in the wall. Hmm. I don't know, man. I mean, it does look like they sort of right themselves after a little while. You can see a shadow moving ever, ever so slightly. And eventually... Come on. You should right yourself, right? Come on. There you go. Right. And then eventually, there you go. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. So if all is well, we should have iron in here. Yay! There it is. <laughs> Oh, you'll love to see it, ladies and gentlemen. Now, obviously, as time goes on, we can go ahead and create ourselves a bunch of blocks. Maybe we put the iron blocks in there, and we could put some poppies inside of this chest back here in case we need red dye for anything. Oh, dude, that's so amazing. We have an iron farm, and it's entirely underground. Dude, that is fantastic. I'm absolutely chuffed with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do today's comment of the day. Matthew Chu says, name the Enderman Dinner Bone. It would be hilarious to have an upside down Enderman on your water tower. All right, well, the good news is, of course, we're able to buy the name tags real easily from our librarian dudes. So let's A, hope that he's still up there. Is he? Yes, he is. Look at that. <laughs> He's still there. Oh, what a doofus. Hey, buddy. You're about to have your life turned upside down. Boop. <laughs> oh, upside down Enderman with a block. And he's still never, ever going to teleport away. There's no teleportable spaces for you, is there? Ah, oh, so adorable. Oh, let's have a look at him from over here. Huh? <laughs> so stupid. Oh, I love it. I love it. I don't know why I didn't think of doing that, but there you go. Yeah, we can make ourselves another block. 
Sweet! Oh, yeah. Guys, before we know it, we're going to have ourselves an iron tier 4 beacon. It's going to be fantastic. Well, for now, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap it up for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have enjoyed today's episode, or maybe you've learned something new, do be sure to drop a like. I'd very much appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to ding that bell if you don't want to miss out on my future content. I mean, guys, come on. The world has just opened up like a million fold. We can make hoppers galore and buckets galore. In fact, talking of buckets, we almost forgot. On our second episode doing it, we almost forgot. We can't go forgetting, okay? We need to go ahead and do a little thing, all right? There's our bucket of tropical fish. All right, broskies, pink one and white one. Go ahead, do the breedy breedy, and let's see what happens, eh? What are we going to get? Oh, it's another white one. All right, let's yoink you, and let's go ahead and breed up the other two. Right, where are you? Uh, it's the brown one and the yellow one. Go on, do your thing. Do your thing. Do it. Do it. Come on. What have we got? Oh, it's another brown one. Now, a lot of you guys were going ahead and saying that, oh, hey, Python, why don't you just go ahead and release the axolotls into the wild? The issue with that is when you pick up axolotls and put them back down, they don't despawn. So the longer this whole breeding thing goes on, the more non-spawnable axolotls we're going to have, and therefore, the laggier the world is going to eventually become. So, yeah. I mean, I could go ahead and maybe store them for now. Now that we have an iron farm, I don't really have any issues with storing them. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic rest of your day. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.